Are you a songwriter? Are you looking to turn your songwriting passion into a full-time gig? Whether you are just at the start of your songwriting journey or a seasoned industry professional, this show is made for you. Welcome to The Songwriter Show, bringing together songwriting news, interviews, and community. Now, welcome your host, Sorrento. Thank you for tuning in and welcome back to The Songwriter Show right here on Reality Radio 101. I'm your host, Sorantos. I'm a solo music artist who's been writing lyrics for as long as I can remember. Words are so important to me, and that's why I'm thrilled to host this show for you every Tuesday evening. I believe that every song is a story. Tonight's guest is Haley May. She's a vocalist, songwriter, and producer from sunny LA, California. She loves creating songs that provide positivity, empowerment, levity, and have the power to connect people from different walks of life. As a songwriter with an individualistic approach, Haley has an act for creating relatable, authentic lyrics and catchy melodies. Through her music, she intertwines stories and dynamic vocals in styles ranging from pop, singer, songwriter, soul, and folk. And now, welcome this week's special guest. Welcome to the show, Haley. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing well. So, kind of reading your bio and stuff, so you you play the ukulele? Yes, I know Haley ukulele. <laughs> that, no, that is awesome. I've always wanted to, I've, I've dabbled a couple of times that I can't really play, but that's really cool. Thank you. That sounds like a great conversation piece, right? Mm-hmm. So do you walk around with your ukulele or your acoustic guitar? I would say mostly the acoustic guitar, but the ukulele is definitely easier to yeah. kind of travel with. Okay. What did you start playing? Which one was the first one? I started singing first, but in terms of the other instruments, guitar. Guitar, okay. How old were you when you started singing? Oh, God. Um, I started singing at uh, age four. Wow. Okay. I was young. Mm -hmm. What got you into that? I was put into a lot of musical theater camps by my parents when I was younger, and I just fell in love with singing and being on stage and that kind of led me into the the world of musical theater. Okay. I actually, I attended uh, Orange County School of the Arts, and I studied musical theater before kind of switching more into commercial music and songwriting. Okay. Do you ever get nervous? It sounds like you've had a ton of experience on the stage. Always. <laughs> well, you know what? You're being honest. I think we all get nervous a little bit, right? But that's uh, that's really yeah. cool and refreshing that you're honest. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Tell us a little bit about when you said that your family kind of signed you up for stuff. Did they kind of push you into it or were you kind of like really interested and they just kind of encouraged it? I definitely showed a lot of interest. I was kind of the the diva of the family. I was very dramatic. As a, as a child, I always cried. It, I don't think it really mattered what was happening. The, the waterworks just came and I kind of made a big deal out of everything. And from that, my parents realized that <laughs> I put on a good performance. And <laughs> that got me started in that world, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Do you have any regrets? Is it something that you're happy with? Or is it something that you kind of wish you went to something else? I wish that I had gotten more into writing music a little earlier. Because I did, I did musical theater through age like 16, 17. And I had already known for a while that I was not as in love with it as I had used used to be. Yeah. Okay. Tell us about your typical week. What do you focus on? What do you work on? Do you work on something more than others? Yeah, I'm working full time right now at a music company. So I do a lot of data entry. And when I'm not doing that, I... I'm always thinking of of some kind of song, whether it's something that's already written or something that has the possibility of being written. I would say that most of my hours are spent either creating some form of music, listening to some form of music, or kind of being involved in the entertainment world in some way, shape, or form. Yeah, okay. Do you create for other people too? Like is 90% of what you work on now is for other people and then you work on your stuff on the side? I have kind of a side job that I do where I write music for other people uh, for special occasions and 
the sort. But the thing that I'm the happiest with is when I get to create music for myself. But I, I love collaborating and working with others is always such an awesome and different experience than if you're just working alone. Yeah, absolutely. Tell us a little bit about your fondest musical memory. What would you say it is? Oh, God. This is going to sound <laughs> very silly. This actually only happened a few years ago, but I was on a cruise with my mom on the, the Princess Cruise Line, and they had this competition, The Voice of the Ocean. And Princess Cruises is, is usually for kind of a lot older people. Yeah. So I, I entered the competition, and I was one of the finalists along with you know five or six other people that were much older. And I won the competition. And, you know, it was a a small thing that didn't really matter. But being able to kind of see the tears turn around as if it was the voice and perform like that was amazing. That's really cool. And you know what, I, I disagree. I think it does matter. You know, I think all that stuff is important. And God, it's it's cool to get that experience and to get a little validation. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, that's cool. Tell us a little bit about this song that we're going to hear in a couple of minutes. What inspired it? What made you create it? This is a song that I co-wrote with a friend. Uh, she goes by Jessie. I think you've interviewed her yeah. a couple of years ago. Sure. Yep. Yeah. We met at Berkeley College of Music. We had a class together. And we started working on this specific song for that class in 2016. And a couple years later, she reached out and said, hey, I just listened to that song that we worked on way back when, and I think we could really turn it into something. So over the past, I'd say two years or so, we have been going back and forth and co-writing and collaborating and recording. And it just kind of turned into this really exciting, interesting, spanning years project that we see today. Yeah, that's really cool. Thank you. Is there a certain message that you want to emphasize in this song for the listeners out there? Definitely. I think this song is is kind of about no matter what struggles you've been through, you know, the hardships when you're feeling down and you're on the ground, that you can always get back up. And when you do get back up, you're stronger than ever. And you need everybody else to know that. You know, it's not just Obviously, you want to know that for yourself, but let everybody else know that you are confident and that you're not going to take anything from anybody else. You are in charge of your fate. Yeah, I think that's a great message. Tell us a little bit about your songwriting process. How do you get started? Do you get started with your acoustic guitar, melody, lyrics? How do you get started? I feel like it's always kind of different. My favorite method is starting with something catchy, whether it's a a melody line or a lyric line, and whether that ends up being the hook of the song or another part of it, everything kind of stems from that point. I've found that getting to create music with Ableton Live has really broadened my horizons. When I am just writing with acoustic guitar, the music tends to kind of turn more into folk or acoustic pop because of the styles that I'm comfortable playing. And when I get to do Ableton Live, I get to do a lot more experimentation and trying things that I've never done before. Yeah. Is that your main DAW that you focus on, Ableton? Yes. Okay. All right. I'll tell you what. Let's uh, take a listen to your song, then we'll come back for a talk. Okay? Okay. All right. Awesome. Check this out, everybody, and let us know what you think. So this crowd's always stalking around and beating and Bruce close to taking me down. I'm not finished yet. I'm good when I'm good, but I'm better when I'm bad. Eyes peering up, always ready to act. I'm never gone, always pressing on. Prowling with the wolves, and if they attack, take it back, lead the path. Played all the games, but they can't control what's already untamed. They don't expect that I'll be at this Caught in 
Now high off of my bloody grin Why quit the hunt when it's sweet as in sin? Right, Haley, that was really cool. Thank you for sharing that song. It's many years in the making, but I think it was definitely worth it. Thank you so much for having me, and I'm so happy that people are getting to hear it on the show. Yeah, you're welcome. Do you have any personal advice for somebody that's at the Berkeley Music School or someone getting started or thinking about this career? What advice would you give them? I would give the advice that I, I wish somebody had given me. You know, you don't you don't have to be a perfectionist all of the time. I think if you have something that you are proud of making and something that you want people to hear, just put it out. You don't need to wait until it's absolutely perfect or you're never going to have anything out and you're never going to get to keep making music. So just when you're inspired, create videos, create music, put things on the internet, put things, you want to have those memories. And the more that you create, the more you're going to get to. I think that's great advice. But, you know, the flip side is there's so much content out there. So Mm -hmm. how do you create something that's worthwhile that more than one person is going to watch? That's a very difficult question for sure. For me, what's really important is when I'm creating content, the idea might start from me, but the music is not just for me. It's for the audience. It's for whoever's listening. And I kind of take my heart and soul and I I put it in there, but I want to make sure that anybody else is going to be able to hear it and relate and understand and maybe have some sort of memory that's connected to it. So just anything you put out there, think of the audience and think about the things that people are going to want to see and how you could be able to create that content. Yeah, it's a great point. One of the questions kind of ask everybody is about scams. So Mm -hmm. any scams you want to warn us about or anything you might have fallen for so we can protect each other? I haven't luckily been through too much of the scam world, but I know something that I've, I've talked a lot about with other people is when you're working with other people that may be a lot bigger than you, they have a lot more experience and you're getting contracts and you're getting all of that information, just make sure you read through it and you talk about it with somebody else because you don't want to get taken advantage of. And there's there's definitely that battle between wanting to have your music out there and wanting to make sure that you get the rights that you're supposed to, and that's a challenge for sure. But just putting some thought into that. Yeah, I think you're right, and I think it's definitely a challenge for songwriters especially, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
I read an article, I think it was last week or two weeks ago, you know, about songwriters. And obviously they're still not getting fair pay. But how was it called? It was something how the really famous people, you know, they automatically take 20 percent. But now they're taking even more from songwriters, you know, like their quote unquote writing credit. And it was just kind of really unfortunate to see. It's always been there, but it's just gotten ridiculous now. They started talking about Elvis and Dolly Parton. How, you know, she almost cut the song. She said no, and then Whitney Houston cut it. But it was just kind of sad to see that, you know, because like you said, you want to hit, right? Mm-hmm. And a huge star comes at you. Of course, you're going to give them 20% or 50% or whatever they want. But it's just kind of sad to to see that stuff going on. I know it definitely happens often and to far too many people. Yeah. Do you think that men and women are treated equally at this point? Or do you still think there's kind of an imbalance? There's definitely an imbalance. I think that there is an expectation for what men are going to create or what women are going to create. And because of that, a lot of the comments that women will get will be focused on kind of appearance or If they say something that is offensive to a man, they're going to get a lot more flack. And with men, I think they can get away with so much more and they're not going to be questioned as much. Women have to try kind of twice as hard to get in the door. And they also have to work even harder and just continue to make music and hope that the right person hears it. Yeah. I I think our society, you know, I think we've come a long way with all sorts of imbalances with minorities, women, just everybody. But Mm -hmm. I think there is still a lot of inequality, which is kind of unfortunate. Yeah. There's, there's inequality everywhere. And I mean, the women is just a small part of it. Who is your favorite person to follow on social media? Oh, my God, there are so many people. I would say I love Billie Eilish. And I think getting updated on all of the different things that she's doing and the processes and part of her life is it's really fascinating. And it's it's helpful for people that are kind of more starting out or at a lesser point in their career. Yeah. You know, the one thing I find fascinating is just artists. I think the young people are going to save the planet. And I'm not just talking about global warming and all the things going on. I'm talking about, can you imagine in the past? Now it's like we'll show off our cellulite, our stretch marks, Mm -hmm. body, just all these things that people had to endure. And to some extent, they still do, right? But I love the way Billie Eilish is just herself. And she recently talked about Tourette's and stuff. I had no clue she was struggling with that. So it's just kind of fascinating to see people lead the way. And just to be honest and be like, hey, this is who I am. And I love it. It's very authentic and it's very cool. Yeah. I think a lot of the times when you're insecure about a specific thing, if you make a song about that, chances are there are a lot of other people that feel the same way. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Do you have the coolest gig that you've ever been on or sang at or performed at that you want to share with us? Uh, This happened when I was part of a performing group in high school, but I got to do this whole performance at Angel Stadium. And when I was kind of much younger, 16, whatever, being able to perform in that space with an entire crowd, I think really just kind of lit a fire in me and made me want to continue doing it. And it was it was definitely a turning point. It's good. Do you think everyone should have a turning point like that? Or do you think people that are just kind of going through the motions, nothing crazy, just kind of putting in the work. Do you think they're missing something or do you think some people have an epiphany or moment and some people don't and it's okay? Or how do you, how do you sort that out? I mean, I'd I'd like to think that everybody has some kind of moment, whether they realize it or not. I think people that feel things very deeply are the people that kind of are thinking about this, the big moment or the turning point. And at least for me, it's, that's what's been helpful because it kind of, it, it makes me want to do something even more. And I think anyone has the ability to do it, but that kind of the energy that comes along with it is very helpful. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. What do you have coming this year for the fans that you want to share? Any surprises, anything? 
Well, there's going to be a little bit more music released, which I'm very excited about. I can't go into too many details about it, but it's just, it's something that's new. And I really hope that people are going to enjoy it when it comes out. Tell us about your website, your socials, where can people find you? Where can they buy your music, stream it? Yeah, people can buy and stream my music. My artist name is Haley May, so H-A-Y-L-E-Y, last name M-A-E. And it's my music is out on all of the major streaming platforms, Spotify, Amazon. You know, I'm forgetting every other streaming platform that exists in this moment, but all of the other ones as well. My uh, social media, so I mostly use TikTok and Instagram. That is the Haley May, so the same spelling, but just with a the in front of it. And my website, www.haleymay.com, which has you know, exciting material and a couple of the songs that I've been working on and the different things I've been doing along with photos and contact information. Last question for you, Haley. If you could be any animal in the world, which one would you be and why? Hmm. There's so many animals. You know, I think I'd want to be a koala because they just get to sleep all day and hug <laughs> trees. And that seems pretty, pretty fun. Yeah. <laughs> I think sleeping all day would be fun, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, Haley. I want to thank you so much for being on the show tonight. Uh, it was such a pleasure having you on tonight. Thank you so much for having me. It's been really exciting. You're welcome. So thank you to all the fans out there for spending a little bit of your precious time with Haley and I. Thank you for listening. We both hope your own unique story gets heard around the world. My name is Sorantos. Please join me every Tuesday night to hear other amazing artists share their fascinating behind-the-scenes stories right here at the Songwriter Show on Reality Radio 101. And tonight I'm leaving with one of my songs called Rock the Vibe. Check it out. Have a great night. I love you guys.
Thank you for listening to The Songwriter Show. To keep the momentum going, head over to www.songwritershow.com and join our free music community of artists, songwriters, and producers. That's www.songwritershow.com. This program was mixed and mastered by Landis Maitland-Whitelaw at landismaitlandwhitelaw.com.